Welcome Wanderers. I would love to say welcome back, but this is actually the first official video I'm going to make on one of my adventures for YouTube. Uh, this was kind of where all of this started uh, when I started thinking about, God, you know, I'd really like to document some of these adventures that I do and uh, maybe make some YouTube videos. So here I am. Kind of the reason this one spawned is we tried to do some research on this adventure and this place that we wanted to go to for some backcountry skiing and snowboarding and we couldn't find anything. So it kind of got me thinking, I'll document our trip, throw something out there, maybe I help the next person. So with that, here we go. This is going to be a video about a backcountry ski and snowboard trip I did with a buddy in February of 2023. We went to the snorkeling elk yurt uh, near Beaver, Utah. Now this was a new adventure for us that me and some of my backcountry friends had been going to uh, various huts, uh, backcountry huts in Colorado and Montana for the last couple of years to get our backcountry fix in. And we wanted to try a yurt. So we found the snorkeling elk yurt in Beaver, Utah. Now, if you want to find them, go to ski tushar, T U S H A R dot com, and that's going to bring you to the Tushar, Mar Tushar Mountain Guides. Uh, they are the outfit that we went through for this trip, and they actually own the yurts and they set them up and take them down every year. So, a couple things uh, to know about the area. First of all, it's right at Eagle Point Ski Area, which is, I would say, a mid-sized ski area. It's definitely not your Snowbird or your Park City or anything like that in Utah, but it's definitely got some good vertical. It's got some good runs. Uh, we got some fresh snow. We did ski there uh, on the front end of our trip before we went into the backcountry, had some good turns and some good runs. Uh, it, it was awesome. Uh, also, huge shout out to the uh, ski patrol there. We did go speak with them. Uh, my buddy and I both, uh, he's still current ski patrol and I did ski patrol for nine years. Uh, they hooked us up with some passes. Uh, so that was kind of fun uh, to get to check out their resort and uh, you know see where they work. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the Eagle Point Ski Resort and they have some condominiums there if you want to stay there before you're your excursion into the backcountry, which is what we chose to do. Figured it would be pretty convenient because it's right there. Uh, just know that this ski resort is about a half an hour outside of town, up a mountain road, and there's not much up there. Uh, when we got up there on Sunday evening around 6 p.m., uh, the restaurant was closed and we hadn't gone grocery shopping. We didn't have any food. A uh, huge shout out to Alan, who was the owner of the hut and are the yurt and actually the guide that we had. He, uh, he brought us over to his place and hooked us up with some burgers and drinks and kind of got to know them a little bit. Uh, so yeah, there's really no services up there. Uh, with that being said, uh, we did a day of skiing on the front end and then we got into the back country. So I'm sure you're sick of me blabbing. Let's get after it. Heading into the snorkeling elk yurt outside of Beaver, Utah going down the main road right outside of Eagle Point Resort where we stayed. When you're going down the road you are looking for Big John Flat Trailhead. There'll be a sign with a parking lot. It's Forest Road 123. The trailhead is at about 8,600 feet and I think the guide said that the yurt is sitting at about 10 4. We got a gorgeous morning here in February of 23 to do the skin up and see how it goes. Well, here we are at the trailhead. Uh, Forest Road 123 is right there. And you pretty much follow that the whole way up to the yurt. As you can see, the parking lot here pretty big. There's Dan putting his boots on. Uh, when we talked to our guide, he did say that this is a popular place for snowmobiles. So if you just kind of park out of the way so they can get their snowmobile trails trailers in here. And uh, yeah, he said it's between about three and a half to four hour hike up at a leisurely pace, supposed to be 4.6 miles with about 1800 feet of elevation gain. So. Let's get skinning. Here we are skinning up right off of the parking lot. There's only two turns on this whole thing apparently and you don't take either of them. This sign here says Big John Flat straight ahead three miles. 
that's the way we want to go. So, so far, the skin's been the same way up this road. Nice gradual incline, nothing steep. It's a gorgeous day to hike. So, here is the only second turn, and you don't take it. You keep going straight up 123. This is Hamilton Flat and Kay's Meadow to the right. The main road is obviously that way. Take a look here. The old Apple Watch Apple says we're about 2.64 miles from the truck. And about almost 900 feet of elevation here that we've gone up. So, just uh, keep trucking along. We're just coming into Big John Flats in the meadows. Just stop and get a little, uh, little lunch break. We're at about probably two hours and 50 minutes to get up this far with our Minnesota lungs. Dan decided he needed to use the outhouse, but there's too much snow in front of it to open the door. Good thing we carry shovels in the backcountry. Continuing our journey up, we're gonna pass a couple US Forest Service lavatories. The one that's on your left, the hut should be right up there. About 400 yards. Or the yurt. Uh, this part's getting a little bit steeper. Um, you're climbing about three to 400 feet. I think the guide said from the Porta John up to the hut or the yurt. So almost there. Just a gorgeous day to skin. And Dan's still alive. Finish strong. Well, here we are, we made it. Uh, for distance, we have some discrepancies in our apps. Um, my Apple Watch said 5.4, the Apple Watch Ultra. My Garmin InReach said 5.3. Uh, Keltopo uh, said five. And uh, my partner's watch, I'm not sure what he's running, said 4.8-ish. Uh, with right about 1800 feet of elevation gain there it is let's walk inside we've gotten a lot of snow this year so the yurt is uh almost buried first look at home sweet home a little rustic hi dan we made it So pretty basic, got a little propane stove there. Some beds with some sleeping pads. You're gonna to wanna to bring your own sleeping bag. Just a plywood table. And the wood burning stove. Woohoo! That's all she wrote. Run. 
Nice. Woo! Good throwing here. Copy dropping. So one part of the Starkland elk here is that's a pain in the ass. You have these snowmobilers. They saw us skinning up this hill. And in the time we took us to skin it up, they tore the whole thing up. And they, they're tearing all the skiing up. Is the volume on your radio up? Because I called you and you didn't answer. How about now? Test. Test. Yeah. Hi. Right. Sounds good. The snow is good in here. All right, Dan, go ahead and drop. Come drop. Just hiked up about 800 feet to the ridge. Took us about an hour to hike up here. Tushar Mountains outside of the snorkeling elk here in Beaver, Utah. You can see the runs over there. That is the Eagle Point ski area. And that's Dan, and we're gonna go down. Let's do it. And pro tip, I gotta stop and put my uh, boots back in ride mode. They're in hike mode. Part two, we're gonna finish it off.
down to the pack. Well, there you have it. One backcountry ski trip to Beaver, Utah backcountry. Uh, it was a really great trip. Uh, I did want to mention that they do offer a different yurt that's only a two and a half mile skin if you didn't want to do the full five mile or 5.4, depending on which one we looked at. That one is the Puffer Lake yurt. And again, it's 2.5 mile skin in and it sits at about 10,400 feet. So uh, it's a less of an elevation climb and it's supposed to be a pretty mellow skin in as well. We didn't make it to that uh, hut at all, so I can't really speak to it. The snorkeling elk yurt, as you can see, was rustic. Uh, it it could have used a little TLC. Um, you know, this is our first yurt. We weren't really sure what to expect. Uh, a couple things that kind of stood out that maybe some improvements they could make is there was no mattresses. Um, there was some like old thermarests that were stained and kind of nasty looking um, that we ended up using because we didn't bring bedrolls. Um, so I would bring your own bedroll and whatever you want to sleep on and obviously your own uh, sleeping bag. Uh, the wood burning stove was completely missing one of the four legs and they replaced it with a cinder block and the other one uh, was cracked about halfway through which was a little concerning um, just being as that thing stays on fi fire all night and you just don't want it to tip over. Uh, the, the yurt would leak a little bit. I don't know if it was condensation. Uh, usually in the afternoons when things would warm up um, but you just got to kind of put some of your stuff to side make sure it's not getting dripped on. As far as the skiing goes, um, all the stuff that you saw skiing was obviously pretty mellow, about that uh, under 30 degrees for sure, probably about 25 degrees, most of it was. Um, I think that last one we measured at 28. Um, so we're below that avalanche danger, but just know depending on where you hiked and skinned up to, there is uh, potential to get into some avalanche uh, terrain there. So if you are gonna venture into those areas, just make sure to know before you go, uh, get some training, make sure you have your beacon shovel probe and a partner who knows how to use it. Um, so yeah, that was good. Another thing to keep in mind is just weather. So the weather looked great, right? When we were videoing, we actually had a day and a half down in between because we had a huge windstorm where it was like 50 mile an hour winds probably at the yurt and even more up top. As you can see, some of the skiing towards the end was, was very windswept. We ended up coming out a day or, day or two early and went up to Salt Lake City and skied Park City because there was another windstorm coming in and we just weren't gonna be able to ride. So a couple things to keep in mind there. Uh, we did have cell service, which is surprising. Uh, most of the backcountry stuff we go to, I don't have cell service, so I run my Garmin inReach. That's a satellite communicator. Didn't need it on this one because um, the cell phone worked. So that's always good to know. Well, it's about all I can say for this one. Until the next adventure, I'll see you then. Wander well, my friends, because you only have one life to live. When you're bored on a down date in the yurt, Find stuff to do. Shit happens. <laughs>